Well, hello, good morning. Uh, today I want to make a very special video because today I want to address in particular a topic that is being brought up by uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson uh, quite often uh, in a lot of his conferences that you can see online. I will uh, give some links in the descriptions uh, in the description below. Um, if you already have uh, watched one of these conferences or lectures uh, in different institutions, you may be uh, m very familiar with uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson views on Islam and history of Islamic science. Uh, I, I, I won't explain his view here because I, I, I'm here to actually criticize those views because I think there are a lot of flaws there that uh, need to be uh, corrected, uh, need to be uh, um, righted. So uh, um, I, I won't explain fully his view. You can you can watch those videos online on YouTube. So just uh, get to those before you come here, or if you are already familiar with his narrative, uh, you can stay here and enjoy the video. So there are three. Uh, very distinct uh, flaws with uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson's uh, narrative. Uh, these three key points are, first of all, the dates, which I think are entirely wrong. Uh, I would say, well, I, I talk about this later. Let, let's list, first of all, the, the flaws of Neil deGrasse Tyson's uh, narrative of Islamic, uh, Islamic philosophy and science during the Middle Ages. Uh, first of all, as I said, the dates are wrong, I think. Uh, uh, the second thing is perhaps his most uh, famous uh, statement is that uh, somehow Al-Ghazali, which was a thinker uh, uh, during the uh, Middle Ages in the Islamic world, uh, he is somehow like uh, guilty of all the, the, the decay of the Islamic science or the stagnation of Islamic science, however you want to call it. And this is also, I think it's a flaw. I mean, it's not entirely wrong, but I think it's also unfair to just uh, go around and say that Al-Ghazali was kind of the, the, the guy uh, that destroyed Islamic thought and philosophy and science in the Middle Ages. Like going around pointed fingers that way is not precisely uh, accurate, especially uh, because he, he's not just anybody, he's uh, Neil deGrasse. Neil deGrasse Tyson, you are a huge rock star of uh, science right now, like everybody looks up to you. Me, myself, I love you and I, 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 I love your work and I watch all your conferences and interviews and, and read your, your, your books and stuff. It's fantastic, but I'm sorry, but this is actually like a very inaccurate and misleading um, statement that Al Ghazali is somehow like the, the guy that destroyed science. So. Please, Neil deGrasse Tyson, just yes, stay to the end of the video. Uh, so again, this is like the second thing that is wrong with uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson's narrative. And then there is a third thing, uh, and that third thing is uh, something that is not actually like um, plainly stated, but it's it's like laying somewhere and like. Uh, it, it, um, uh, and it's the question of what is exactly the Western culture. Uh, and uh, it, the question comes up because uh, he's very ready to uh, say how Islamic uh, thought was uh, utterly destroyed by this guy, Al-Ghazali. Uh, but then he never, he, he never speaks of and what happened to the classic culture. What happened to the Greco-Latin culture? What happened to... Ptolemy, what happened to uh, the, the Aristotle, Plato, what happened to all the great uh, minds and sciences uh, that, we, that were going around uh, in the Mediterranean world. Uh, what happened to that? He never tells. Uh, he, his, history, his view of history is there were some people in ancient Greece, then there were some Arab people, and then we get to the scientific revolution like we wake up and suddenly we have Copernicus and, and Galileo and, and Newton uh, and all this. And it's kind of uh, very misleading uh, because he, he's very ready to point out that uh, Islamic science and philosophy stagnated. 
but he never thinks about and um, what happened to the Greco-Latin culture. So we will talk about this, we will talk about Al Ghazali and also about the dates. Uh, now I will make a very short presentation uh, because um, I, I guess that in this world you, one needs to, to have some sort of authority. Uh, I don't used to put PhD before my name but I'm actually PhD like you won't see me in this channel using PhD for anything. I am a human being and I don't need a title PhD for anything. I think that any human being is uh, able and capable of uh, having uh, opinions as long as they are uh, grounded and as long as uh, one brings forward evidence uh, of his hypothesis and uh, thoughts, one can say anything. Uh, but today I am, a, I am not speaking as just um, anybody that happens to know a little bit. I am actually a PhD in history of Islamic science. Uh, my doctoral dissertation um, uh, was roughly translated in English because I, I wrote my dissertation in Spanish. Uh, the name of my dissertation in Spanish would be uh, El pensamiento islámico a través de sus concepciones, continuidad y ruptura, desde la antigüedad tardía hasta el renacimiento, which in English could roughly translated would be uh, Islamic thought through its conceptions, uh, continuity and a rupture of, or, or disruption from late antiquity to renaissance. Uh, roughly translated, again. Uh, if you know Spanish, I do recommend you read my, my doctoral dissertation, of course. Uh, uh, although here in the YouTube channel, I usually, um, from time to time, I, 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 I speak about bits of my thesis. There are also a couple of lectures, uh, online lectures that I gave uh, in some other places about some of the topics of my doctoral thesis, but uh, you, you don't need to see that. Uh, I'm going to, uh, to, to, to explain fully what I mean in this video. You don't need to, 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 to read anything. Uh, and, uh, except Neil deGrasse Tyson. I would recommend to Neil deGrasse Tyson. Neil deGrasse Tyson, please read my doctoral dissertation. So first question of all, the dates. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson uh, says the uh, Islamic science flourished between uh, the 800 and the 1100 uh, uh, and, and that's basically those uh, 300 years are basically like the golden age of Islamic uh, science. Uh, this statement, although not entirely uh, wrong, is also again misleading because most, actually most of the most brilliant uh, discoveries and, and, and scientific work that was carried out uh, in the Islamic world was actually uh, carried out after those dates. So if you wanted to uh, actually uh, be accurate in terms of what is the Islamic uh, scientific golden age, you would at least um, uh, put another dates, maybe from the 800s, uh, maybe to, I mean from the from 9th century to the maybe 14th century or the 15th century even. Uh, we, I mean, Neil deGrasse Tyson, he being an astronomer, should know the name Nasir al-Din Tusi. Nasir al-Din Tusi was the head of the uh, observatory of Maraga in what today is Azerbaijan. And in this, this observatory of Maraga actually carried out uh, some astronomical work that was peak at, at the time. Actually, uh, in the Maraga observatory, uh, the observations made uh, were the most accurate observations ever in history until Tycho Brahe. So up until uh, 17th century Europe, you, we don't find anything in terms of uh, astronomical observations as accurate as the Maraga Observatory. And actually there is people that suspect that Copernicus might, must have had some sort of knowledge about uh, the Maraga Observatory. We have to take in account that uh, people working in that observatory, and again, uh, Nasir al Tusi being the, the 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 head of the of the observatory, um, they were making incredible uh, incredible uh, reforms upon the 
Ptolemaic model. So up until the 14th century, uh, we have actually great astronomers working on uh, uh, on reforming and, and improving upon the works of Ptolemy and not just like copying what he said. Uh, there was huge and deep uh, work concerning astronomy and physics and yes, it's true that uh, most of this work then is stagnated and it's true that there is an stagnation, we can talk about that, but this stagnation did not start until way later than the, the dates that Neil deGrasse Tyson uh, provides uh, in his lectures and conferences, uh, it's way later. Uh, so this brings us to the second thing uh, on this subject of uh, the dates, which is, so what are those dates? Why Neil deGrasse Tyson says that uh, only from the 9th century to the 12th century is when uh, this um, uh, golden Islamic golden age happens. It reflects not the actual work of science, it, it reflects the moment we stop translating uh, uh, works from the Islamic world. Uh, as may, many of you may know, uh, most of the uh, Islamic scientific and philosophical uh, works were translated in Spain and Sicily uh, roughly between the 10th century and the 12th century. So for around, uh, let's say, 200 years, uh, a lot of people from all over Europe were coming to Spain and Sicily in order to translate works from um, Arabic language to uh, Latin, basically, also to other Bulgar languages. Uh, I am aware of some translations into Spanish, for example. Uh, um, so yeah, the, basically this, this period of time uh, is when Europe uh, assimilates the, the scientific work of uh, the uh, carried out in the Islamic world and at some point we just stopped translating and this is, uh, uh, I mean, the moment we thought that we have what we want, we can, we can leave actually. Uh, this is basically the moment uh, that Neil deGrasse Tyson talks about. So it's not that Islamic science stopped at, at the, at the uh, 1100s, it's that we stopped translating works from Arabic into uh, Latin at that time, roughly, again. So, uh, so the, those days are not reflecting the golden age of... Uh, <laughs> of Islamic science, they are reflecting the golden age of European translations of, uh, of uh, Islamic uh, scientific works. And this uh, brings us to the third thing. And this third thing is basically Neil deGrasse Tyson. I love you very much. I love you. I, 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 again, I, I, I love your, your lectures, your conferences, your podcasts, everything, really. Uh, believe me, I, I love you and respect you, but you have to read some books, man. Uh, and the first recommendation I would say uh, is um, Sonia Brentius. Uh, she's a professor in, in Germany. Uh, I had the chance to talk to her during my PhD. I contacted her uh, for my PhD and, and he has uh, written a, a, an extensive uh, mass of papers and books concerning this very topic of Islamic science continuity after what we call the, the, the decay of Islamic science uh, or the, the, the golden age, because it's, it's far more complex than that. So I do recommend Neil deGrasse Tyson go and read some papers of this woman, uh, Sonia Brentius. Uh, I will leave the link uh, to his uh, papers uh, in the description below, so Neil, you don't even have to Google her name, you can just go to the <laughs> description uh, below and you can click and you will find uh, her, her, uh, her papers. And now we move on to the point of Al-Ghazali, which is perhaps the most uh, uh, polemic uh, thing in his whole conference and the point where uh, his discourse is even more misleading. So, uh, first of all, I went to to uh, uh, to 
recognize that uh, indeed Al Ghazali is a very important figure on history of Islamic uh, Islamic uh, thought, and he is uh, very influential. He is heavily influential, influential, and he basically uh, shaped Islam in the way we know it today. Uh, most of what we understand as uh, Islamic tenets or as the uh, Islamic uh, philosophy or Islamic way of thinking is truly uh, shaped by Al-Ghazali in some ways. Uh, so it's true that he was heavily influential and it's true that he wasn't precisely a friend of the um, uh, of philosophy at the time the word philosophy was basically um, anything that came from the Greco-Latin culture. Uh, as uh, anything that the, uh, in the in, in Arabic you find uh, the word, the expression rather, ulum uh, al al qudama, which means basically the sciences of the of the old ones, of the ancient ones, which is basically the expression uh, by with uh, by which. Uh, people in Islamic world was referring to anything that came from the uh, Isla uh, the, the classical world. So uh, basically uh, Ptolemy, Plato, Aristotle uh, or Plotinus, uh, everything, anything produced at, the, uh, at that time uh, was considered as part of this Ulum al Qudama like um, the sciences of the of the of the old ones of, of the ancient ones uh, so they didn't really make any distinction between uh, uh, the Plato Aristotle and Ptolemy or other scientists they would take all of it was considered these uh, sciences of the old ones and he al Ghazali was not precisely a friend of uh, of those sciences um, he was well aware of uh, their existence and he knew them and he actually wrote extensively uh, about them in a very objective way uh, in, in a book called uh, the, the Intentions of the Philosophers and he also tried to refute them in several uh, books. Uh, and it is precisely in those uh, refutations in which uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson um, builds, uh, builds uh, his, his own argument concerning how Al-Ghazali destroyed, uh, uh, annihilated Islamic thought and philosophy. Uh, but this is uh, uh, partially inaccurate. Uh, first of all, uh, Al-Ghazali, I mean, you cannot kneel. I've seen your lectures. You cannot say that Al Ghazali said that mathematics are the work of the devil because that's absolutely, completely inaccurate and totally false. Like he never said that. You can quote him uh, basically because he never said that. So you don't even have to. Uh, you don't even have a way to quote that. And actually, mathematics is one of the few things that he saves uh, in his book. Uh, um, the, 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 the guidance, uh, I, I will put the name of the book uh, here written, uh, I don't remember it right now, but in this, in this book of his, he does criticize a lot of the ulum al qudama a lot of the sciences of the ancient ones, and, and, but he, his, his main goal was not to attack uh, mathematics or physics or astronomy, uh, he knew those were sciences that, that were very needed uh, at the moment, particularly for, for example, calendars, uh, navigation, and so on. So he was very aware that those sciences were actually very important. His main uh, criticism was against uh, what we would call today uh, philosophy, and in particular, metaphysics and ethics. Uh, you have to understand that um, Ethics, for example, if we take a look at the ethics of Aristotle, in the ethics of Aristotle, there is no God. And, and this was something puzzling because uh, 
most of the ethics in usually in religions are built upon the idea of the divine and the idea of uh, of gods of some a revealed set of behaviors that are appropriate to, to a culture, to a group. Uh, but Aristotle tries to rationalize that, and although he's not without a religious background, uh, uh, Aristotle, as any human being at the time, uh, was a, a religious person, but he was also very rational. And when talking about ethics, he would talk about ethics in a rational way, uh, and, and in a way that did not need to talk about the gods. Uh, and so with the met metaphys uh, metaphysics, uh, if, if we read the, uh, his books of physics, uh, metaphysics, and, and his books of uh, biology, which was actually, if Aristotle was anything, he was a biologist. Uh, most of his work is concerning biology and not metaphysics or politics or science he was way more interested in animal and plants than he was on on astronomy or physics but anyways if we take a look uh, at uh, aristotle's works uh, he talks about everything in a very rational way without usually needing to get to god in order to explain stuff uh, so again, it's precisely this way of talking about uh, metaphysics and ethics without uh, constantly uh, recurring to, to the idea of God as, a, as, as the type of God that exists in Islam that uh, Al-Ghazali criticized. Uh, Al-Ghazali criticized this way of rationally thinking uh, philosophy, ethics, metaphysics and, uh, and any natural um, any natural um, uh, scientific work that was not leading towards the idea that God is the ultimate creator of everything, and uh, so it's it's not it's not like Al Ghazali is saying stuff against uh, mathematics. Uh, that's absolutely inaccurate. Most of uh, most of his criticism goes against people again like Al Farabi. Al Farabi was a, a thinker about the ninth century. And he's perhaps the greatest thinker in Islamic world, uh, at least in my opinion, uh, he is perhaps the greatest. Uh, and and uh, he wrote extensively uh, about, um, about many topics, among them precisely um, Aristotle. And he continued the works of Aristotle in, uh, within the Islamic uh, philosophical framework. Uh, and it's precisely uh, this, uh, this kind of philosophy, like Al-Farabi's, the one that Al-Ghazali goes against and deep. And now I have to speak a wee bit of my doctoral dissertation, uh, because, um, again, um, Neil deGrasse Tyson, you said uh, that uh, Al-Ghazali was the cause of the decay, like you point out that, you, you point your finger at him, and you say that he, uh, Al Ghazali, is like the, the cause of the decay. Like because of him, the whole Islamic uh, scientific work was utterly uh, destroyed. Uh, and this is absolutely and totally inaccurate. And uh, I will uh, talk about this uh, right now. Um, first of all, I don't think. And this is again. This is uh, we are entering the territory of my doctoral dissertation. Al-Ghazali is not the cause of anything. Uh, Al-Ghazali is the symptom, the symptom of, uh, of something that was going on way before, centuries before even Islam as, as a religion started. Uh, uh, if, we, if we take a look at, at um, Al-Ghazali's arguments and, and his works, we will find out that actually most of his conceptions uh, let's say the uh, his, his body of conceptions, uh, uh, his his mindset um, can be traced back centuries and centuries up until like antiquity. 
which is precisely what my thesis was called uh, uh, like from late antiquity until renaissance because it's not just like uh, islamic is his own thing that just it's, islam didn't appear out of nowhere islam is the consequence of many things that happened way before islam islam is the consequence of changes uh, in um, in the in the eastern mediterranean world and the middle east um, centuries before Islam was codified as a religion. So it's not like Islam appeared out of nothing. Islam is the consequence of many other things. And Al-Ghazali himself is the consequence of many things, changes, developments, uh, and, and political events, and so on. And Al-Ghazali, again, is just the symptom of everything that happened way before and that happened in late antiquity. If you want to point, uh, if, if you want to point your finger at, at somebody, which you can't know because there is no any particular anybody, we are all in this flow of, of change constantly in, in which uh, uh, economy uh, or politics uh, or... Uh, or changes in even even climate changes, uh, even uh, migrations. All this is in a constant flow of time, and we are the effects. We are not the cause of most of it. Uh, so we we are. We, uh, you cannot just say that Al Ghazali uh, did that. He was indeed influential, but he is the symptom of changes that took place in late antiquity. It's in late antiquity when we find out that. Uh, a lot of changes in the mindset took place. Al Ghazali doesn't say anything new. Every argument Al Ghazali uh, is using against uh, philosophy or science can be traced back centuries way before him. And it's so, uh, again, he's not groundbreaking. Actually, if you want to check out uh, what kind of people was the real groundbreaking. Uh, uh, people, you have to go to the late antiquity, and this is precisely where I should recommend to you Neil deGrasse Tyson read the works of Dots. Uh, he wrote a book called The Greeks and the Irrational, and it's a fantastic work, and uh, I recommend you uh, to read it. And anybody watching this, I do recommend you to, to read this book and uh, because you can see um, how Dodds absolutely understands that there is a change going on in uh, the Mediterranean world in late antiquity and that there is a huge transition from the, um, let's say, um, the enlightenment of the classic Greek culture uh, in the period of, let's say, Aristotle and a uh, late antiquity and it's precisely this noticing those changes in the mindset uh, that Dodds absolutely um, excels at so i do recommend you read this book uh, uh, this book was uh, a huge part of my doctoral dissertation and it's a fantastic piece of work and you can see that those changes uh, i mean uh, Dodds stops you uh, in late antiquity, because he his works is actually like in Greek language, he's a philologist above all. So uh, when when things stop being uh, written in, in classical Greek, he, he kind of stops. But if you go on, and this is my PhD dissertation, this is my doctoral dissertation. If you go on, you will see that actually Islam is continuing uh, what uh, what was going on in these changes in late antiquity. So read my thesis, Neil deGrasse Tyson, read my doctoral dissertation. And finally, we get to the final point. I don't want to make this any longer. It's going to be a, a huge video and, and I don't want to bore you. Uh, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, I love you I, and I know you are very busy, so I don't want to take any more of your time. Uh, but let me finish with one thought. Uh, what happened to the classical culture? I mean, you are Neil deGrasse Tyson. You are very ready to point your finger at Al Ghazali and and accuse him of being the, the cause of the destruction of of science. Uh, but then tell me what happened exactly to the classical culture? What happened to the Greco-Latin culture? Well, uh, did they stop like one day they just woke up and stopped doing science? What was going on exactly? 
Like, you are very ready to talk about the decay of the Islamic culture, but then uh, you, are, you, you are not very ready to, to, to talk about the, 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 the classical culture. What was, what was going on? Was there a kind of Al-Ghazali? Uh, was there a Greek or a Roman Al-Ghazali that they destroyed also the classical culture? Uh, what, what is your take on this? Uh, I, I'm really asking you, Neil deGrasse Tyson, take your take a camera, take your phone, and make a video about it because I I, I want to know what what's going on. Because my theory is that uh, in the classical culture we don't have a way to point a finger because there is uh, there is nobody that actually is as clearly as noticeable as Al Ghazali in criticizing uh, philosophy and science, but actually. Uh, if we go again back to the late antiquity, we find a lot of people uh, saying things that Al Ghazali would, would again repeat, and this is precisely uh, what what I want to convey. This idea that it's not just that Al Ghazali uh, destroyed anything; uh, is the idea that is the cultural changes, changes that are not on our hand, that do do not depend on us, that actually affect us. And you cannot just go around pointed fingers. Uh, you have to understand the cultural, economical, political background, uh, sociolo sociolo uh, sociological background of all these uh, time periods uh, in order to properly understand uh, what is uh, going on. I, I, I think it, that is long enough. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, you are fantastic. I love you. I just want to make some notes about it and I hope that anybody else watching this video uh, have I hope you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel if you want to know more about this stuff I usually I publish my my videos about uh, history of science in Spanish but uh, I am uh, I will also be talking about this in English more often so uh, thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed goodbye Neil deGrasse Tyson, read my doctoral dissertation.